Holy shit, I just thought I'd knock the drink over. Mm -hmm. She's so pretty. Hey Tommy, you done take a shit? I'm starting to not make sense. Okay. You ready, Ray Ann? And welcome to Gypsy Book Talks. I'm Taylor. And I'm Ryan. And Taylor and I are making our mark on 2021 by catching you all up on our mid year book breakout. Exactly. So when we started our booktube channel, it was in the very basically beginning of the pandemic. And 2020 was. It was 2020. So with 2021, we wanted to basically do everything that BookTube has to offer, aka this is our very first time doing the mid-year book freakout tag. Um, I know that this is very, very big on BookTube. So here we are. Let's do this. And of course, as we always do, we came up with a drink for this occasion. So I made a peach whiskey lemonade, which you can go ahead and find on our TikTok. We went ahead and posted a recipe video there but let's go ahead and freak out over the fact that we are six months already done with 2021 and we're headed towards 2022 with the f ah freak out holy shit um on the bright side i had a goal of 65 books this year you can check out my reading my goodreads goal i have been very adamant about keeping it up but I had a goal to read 65 books this year, and so far I have read 38, which I am pretty damn proud of. Um, I'm, I think I'm like seven or eight books ahead of schedule right now, but um, I'm about to get a lot more ahead of schedule because uh, that's all I want to do with my life right now is read. I was in a little bit of a reading slump in the month of May, so really getting out of that shit. So I am drinking what I am currently calling the Freak Out Fizz, and literally all it is is pomegranate liqueur and uh, Prosecco. Um, I have no idea how it tastes, I just grabbed some things on my cabinet that I had laying around because I haven't had time to go to the store, so let's try it. God, that's good. It's a little sour. It's just a little sour, maybe like a little bit of agave. But it's cute! I also forgot I managed to get through 50% of my read um I said 52 books and I'm already 30 in so yay well let's get into it so again I am drinking the freak out frizz so cheers a uh, freak out frizz god damn it cheers everyone let's go ahead and jump into question one what is the best book you read in 2021 I'm going to have to say seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins read um this book was absolutely phenomenal it blew me away from the minute I started reading it to the last ending of it which tore my heart in two but I would probably end up rereading this one and I don't really reread books this is a book that is absolutely just astounding breathtaking the best book I've probably ever read ever if I'm gonna be completely bold and say that I had to go with from Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Um, this one still, I went through my Goodreads right before and still this one, I just had a really special experience reading it, if that makes sense. Like even, like, I don't even know how to explain why I love this book so much, but I just felt like the storytelling, the concept behind it, uh, the characterization, I really enjoyed all of it. So I read this one and the second one and I loved them both. The third one did take a slight decline for me, but the first book, like I read this book and immediately wanted to reread it and that's how I knew that this was going to be like a new top series for me because everything about it I just loved. I loved going back and trying to make um, theories about what was coming up next. I loved you know calling people and trying to talk about whoever had read this book I loved calling them and trying to talk about it because it was something that just really stuck with me um so this one still I've read a lot of really good books this year I've had a great reading year but I don't know this one just takes the cake for me right now we'll see if this is still the top one at the end of the year but as of right now from blood and ash is my favorite Okay, number two is the best sequel that you have read so far in 2021, and I chose <laughs> this, I did this weirdly, um, Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. God, 
I have also talked about this in a few other videos before, but the first book was not quite my cup of tea. I love Cassandra Clare. She is one of my favorite authors, and I was very excited for Chain of Gold. I thought the cover was beautiful. I thought the concept was amazing. I loved um, all of the Clockwork series, so I was really excited to see that perspective in their children. But Chain of Iron just, or Chain of Gold just missed the mark for me, but when Chain of Iron came out, this could easily be like one of my new top series because I loved this book so much. I thought it was so interesting. I loved the characters. I loved the conflict. Um, I loved all of the side plots going on. Like there was obviously like one main plot, but the side plots were just as interesting as the main plot was. So I freaking love this book. I am still making theories about what's going to happen in the next one and I know for a fact that I'm going to reread this before the next one just because I want to. Um, I'll probably reread Chain of Gold too because I did feel like when I read it the first time, um, I read it at a weird time. Like I, I don't remember if I was like going through something personal or not like paying enough attention to it and that's why I didn't like it as much. Um, cause most people do love that book but I just feel like it was a personal preference for me and it could have just been situational so I definitely want to give that one another chance but this sequel hit it out of the park. Um, yeah so for this book I have not really really delved into a series. Um, the only series that I have read which is probably my ultimate favorite book so it I guess like up there with Evelyn Hugo but this is a book that before Evelyn Hugo I was like I love this book I'll talk about this book forever this is my absolute favorite book and that is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas um again this is just this tore my heart in two I love this it made me cry so hard and you can see that in our or I should say in my first time reading Akatar uh there's a specific clip where I'm just crying just bawling my eyes out because I got to a certain section in this book and I feel like this is like a comfort read now to me like I just picked this book up and I'm like ah. so question number three is a new release that you haven't read yet but you want to and I have two different books for this so the first one I have is One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston and the second one I have is Malice by Heather Walter. Um, that one didn't come out that long ago, but I feel like it came out a long time ago and I know it didn't. <laughs> this one, I'm going to go with Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Um, this year, I read my first Taylor Jenkins Reid book. First, I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and then I read Daisy Jones and the Six and I loved both of them so much that like Malibu Rising immediately went to the top of my TBR. Like the second it was out, I was like, okay, let's buy it. I'm ready to read it. Unfortunately, I have not been able to buy it yet. Um, mainly because when I find it in stores, it's too expensive and I'm waiting until I get a coupon. Like cheap ass me is waiting to buy a coupon or waiting to get a coupon so that I can buy that damn book. But uh, I am really excited for it. I have not read any um, summaries or anything about it, but if you did love it, if you have read it, um, comment down below and let me know if I need to like ASAP hop on that shit. And number four is the most anticipated book for the second half of the year. So I am very, very, very excited for the next book in the Kingdom of the Wicked series, which is Kingdom of the Cursed by Carrie Maniscalco. Um, I've always been saying her name wrong, by the way, in every previous video. video eh, in every previous video, I say Carrie Maniscalco. I did not know there was another C. Um, but here we are, Carrie Maniscalco. I don't know if I'm saying it right, I'm so sorry. Um, but I read Kingdom of the Wicked, I loved it. Um, it is one of those ones where in the moment I was kind of like hesitant about. I was like, this is, I think I like this, but um, there were certain things that I was waiting for that never came. So I kind of felt like I didn't fully get to enjoy it. I had expectations for it, uh, mainly because it was a recommendation from my girls, Brooke and Jada, over at Booked and Boozy. Um, uh, they were the one who gave me the recommendation, so I had very preconceived notions about what the book was. And if you know them, I just thought it was going to be smut trash. So <laughs> when I read it, I was not expecting it to be what it was. So I felt like I didn't get to appreciate the plot as much, but it was one of those things where the second I finished it, 
I did want to reread it again because I wanted to just sit with it. I wanted to make theories. I wanted to um, really think about the actual like mythology of witches that was like really talked about in the books and the seven deadly sins. I thought that was really freaking cool. Um, it's something that like I have been interested in for a very long time. So I'm definitely going to be rereading the first one before the next one comes out. But it comes out in October and I'm already planning like I'm planning to take at least like two days off to just really focus on reading that book from start to finish. Maybe reading the first one. I don't know. We'll see. I'm really excited about it. Um, so this one I found a little hard because I have like books that I just pick up that I'm like, oh, this looks interesting and it doesn't happen to come out till like the end of the year. So something that I am really looking forward to because I really enjoyed the first book of the series is A Touch of Chaos uh, by Scarlett St. Clair because I loved um, A Touch of Darkness. Oh my gosh, I started running through A Touch of Malice, <laughs> A Touch of Chaos. Um, but yeah, so I remember reading a Touch of Darkness, and I really enjoyed that, even though I definitely was kind of like a little hesitant on it. Um, I do have, let's see, A Touch of Ruin right there, um, so I'm planning on reading that, and then I'm gonna get A Touch of Malice, because I know that came out not that long ago, and then A Touch of Chaos, on its way, very excited. Okay, question number five. What is the biggest disappointment? Um, so I was not really um, disappointed by any books, I would say. I took this a little more personally, and I would say that I'm actually kind of disappointed in myself for not fulfilling my monthly reading goals. I know that reading goals are there as kind of more of a suggestion than a have to, you need to do this, but I put a lot of pressure on myself to try and read the amount of books that I have had set out and I have been so subpar in meeting the minimum requirement that I had set for myself. So I'm kind of disappointed in that. But with that being said, there are six, well technically we're in seven, so I guess like five more months, math, um, to finish and like actually meet my monthly goals and this month I feel we have a good amount set for the uh m the myth taker path versus pantheon um there's only five books and they're all books that I've been trying to read or have been really really wanting to read so it feels like I can get this done wish me good luck on that guys I'd really appreciate it this one was really hard for me because one I have had such a great reading year that it was hard for me to pick a like most disappointed book. So first, uh, this one isn't necessarily like a disappointing book, but more of a disappointing situation because there was one book that I read. It was You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. And I like really wanted to read these books because I just wanted to feel productive. I've been wanting to read a lot of self-help books recently in order to kind of help me stay motivated and productive in my daily life. So I read these at the beginning of the year and I enjoyed them. They were just kind of like, it's hard for me to rate self-help books, but I definitely liked them. But the disappointment comes from the fact that I recently learned that she has said some transphobic things, which I do not support. I don't know, I'm really disappointed to hear that, and I will not be reading any more of her books. So that was one major disappointment in my reading life this year. Uh, but the second, this one is completely different. This is just a book that I'm most disappointed by, which I hate to say it because I still liked the book. Um, but a book that was a bit disappointing for me was A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. Um, I wouldn't even say that I was disappointed by the story because I still enjoyed it, but I think I had so many expectations for this book and I had so many theories that I kind of expected to see. I, I just expected a little bit more out of it. And while I still rated it four stars out of five, which is really good, um, it didn't quite hit the mark that Sarah J. Mass books normally did for me. I do want to reread it where I can basically kind of just sit with it because again I went in reading like having so many expectations for it that I was rushing through waiting to get to those theories or waiting to get to the basically the story to start 
where it had already started and it kind of passed me by. So I'd like to reread it and just like enjoy it, if that makes sense. So hopefully I will be able to get to that soon. Um, probably not though. I'll probably wait until like right before the next one comes out. But yeah, I hate to say that a Sarah J. Mass book disappointed me because she is like one of my favorite authors, but here we are. I was, I was a little disappointed, just a little bit. Okay, back to a little bit of happiness, which is what was your biggest surprise book? Surprise surprise that you loved it. I don't know. It just says biggest surprise. Um, for that, I'm going to go with, I already talked about it, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Um, I knew I was going to like this book. Like, I for sure knew that I was going to enjoy it, but I did not know that it was going to become a new favorite book for me. I am not big on contemporary. If you have been following us for a while, you know that I very much stick to fantasy. I love fantasy. I love world building. Um, so when I picked up this one, I was very surprised by how quickly I got through it, how much I loved it, um, how much it kind of did make me feel like I was in a different world. There was still so much escapism in this because it is a world that I have never experienced. It was really fun to read. It was really amazing. I loved the characters. It has LGBTQ plus representation. And I thought it was excellent. So it makes me, I am now a big fan of Taylor Jenkins Reid. She is one of my new favorite authors and 10 out of 10 will keep reading all of her stuff. So I don't have this book, but I listened to it on audiobook and that is Untamed by Glennon Doyle. I was shockingly surprised by that because I'm really not a fan of memoirs or like personal stories that this was something that actually blew me away when I was reading it. I really, really enjoyed it. <laughs> Number seven is new favorite author, either a debut author or new to you. And both of these authors are actually very new to me. I've talked a good majority about both of these authors in this video already, and that would be Scarlett St. Clair and Sarah J. Mass. Both of them, um, I've kind of introduced, I've been introduced to like fantasy, like smut, I guess. Um, and it's solely not because of that. I really just love their retellings of stories that were already made and I know that that's like super anticlimactic um, of a reason but no I actually I really love Scarlett St. Clair's vision of the Greek mythology as well as Sarah J. Mass's retelling of just like Beauty and the Beast is my absolute favorite favorite um, since I was like a little girl so when I heard that, you know, it's just like a fairy retelling, I had to read it and she can pull people into a story so easily. So that just blew me away. But both of them, I really do like, and I will probably keep reading because yeah, I'm kind of loyal to the authors that I really, really like. I have quite a few. First of all, just mention Taylor Jenkins Reid. Um, she is new to me that this year is the first time I have read any of her books, but also, Carrie Metascalco loved Kingdom of the Wicked. Very excited to start reading more of her stuff. She's one of my new favorites. Um, Elise Kova, who wrote the Air Awakens series, which I'm going to be talking about a little bit later in this tag. And then there's one more. Oh, Saba Tahir, which I put right here. Um, I read the Ember and the Ashes series, and now I will need to be reading all of Saba Tahir's stuff. Um, it was really, really really good. I just finished it, so it's still a little emotional for me, but yeah. Those are my new favorite authors right now. Um, honestly, there's probably more. Jennifer Alarman Trout, the first time reading her. Um, to be fair, though, I've only read from Blood and Ash. I haven't read any of her other work, which she has a lot of books, so I don't know if I'm quite ready to say that she's one of my new favorite authors, because I do not know how I'm gonna like her other work. I've only read one series. We'll find out. Number eight, we have our newest fictional crush, and I think we all knew what would happen here. And I'm definitely going with Castile from the From Blood and Ash series, and I'm, again, keep talking about it, real sorry about it, but Castile is like, my dream. Love him. Yeah, I just, yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. I don't need to talk any more about it. I don't really have a lot of fictional crushes. Um, the book that I'm still finishing that I was reading last month was Heartless, so I'm gonna say Jest. I think he's really funny. I think he would probably be like a really fun time of a person to hang out with because he's just like super witty and 
It reminds me a little bit of my girlfriend, so there's that. <laughs> Newest favorite character, um, I'd have to say more or the Morrigan. And if you've seen our TikTok, you understand. I hold her dear to my heart, so. So for this one, I am going back to An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. Um, I loved a lot of the characters in here. I loved most of the characters in here, but my favorite character who I love so much is Helena Quilla. Um, there's a lot to unpack to her story, first of all, and I can't do it in this because it would be so spoilery, but I, I just really love her. I loved the, her character dynamic. I loved the grayness of her morality. I loved, um, her, how like she voiced her confusion and how she went through a lot and did not quite know what she believed in most of the time but she still worked towards trying to do what was best. I don't know. There was a lot about her that I really loved uh, but most of it like I just thought that she was an awesome character. I loved Helene, okay? I loved her. I'm just getting weird now. Okay, this one is made for me. Number 10 is a book that made you cry. Now let's be real. I've read 38 books this month and I have probably cried through over half of them because I am an emotional bitch. But this one is the one that probably made me cry the most out of everything. Like sob, tears, like takes a picture of myself and sends it to the person who recommended this book you know who you are. Um, but it was Fire Falling by Elise Kova. This is the second book in the Air Waken series. And while the first one was, I really enjoyed it. Obviously I went on to the second one. This book was a million times better than the first one. I loved it so much, but there are some heavy moments in here that just made me sob, like full on on the ground sobbing because ah, there's some characters who die she deals with some trauma like there's a lot that happens and i honestly books two three and four i probably cried the most in those books than i have read uh have cried in any of the books that i have read this year so it's definitely going to this one i am a crier i am emotional it is me as a person I tend to cry at like a lot of things, I'll mostly cry at commercials, uh, movies, whenever it gets to the really sappy parts and the sad songs come on, it's just like tears and any time that a book starts to set up a very sad moment, I am already pre-crying before anything even happens. So I'm gonna say the book that made me cry the most and that would probably be Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Um, mostly because that book is tragic. There are so many things in there that are just so saddening. And that was a book that probably took me, I mean, I wouldn't say the longest. That was a book that took me a very long time to read because there are such dark graphic things happening that it really just like heart shattered. So yeah. <laughs> So a book that made you happy. This was something that I don't normally look for these books, but I was actually recommended this by Booked and Boozy, and that is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Oh my gosh, yep. Realization there, I'm just kind of a dummy. Like, it really did not hit me. The one last stop in Red, White, Royal Blue, I'm a dumbass, that's what I am. Anyway. So okay anyway um yes so I absolutely love this it is so cute rom com set up I just oh it makes me like so happy and there are so many spicy bits to this that I was like <laughs> I was like, oh, what <laughs> like it was a lot it was a lot but honestly their relationship is so cute and seeing them like grow and blossom and seeing the ending is just I love it. I love it so much. It's so precious. Ugh. It's giving me chills just thinking about it. Unfortunately, I apparently don't read a lot of books that make me happy. Like, uh, uh, most books make me happy, but the ones that make me the happiest are the ones that make me sob. So, 
this is a hard one for me, but one book that probably made me hurt the least was A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett Sinclair. Um, this one is very romance heavy, it is very fun, it is very happy, um, and while there is some drama, it's got some fantasy aspects, obviously there's some things that go down that suck, but for the most part, it was pretty chill, it was a pretty fun read, and I full on enjoyed it. So, I'm gonna say that this one probably made me the happiest out of all of them. Other ones very much made me happy, but they also made me sad at the same time. Which, again, kind of my favorite books. Okay, number 12 is the most beautiful book you have bought this year or it has been gifted to you. Um, so one of the things, it wasn't necessarily a book, but I did buy the Illumicrate book covers for um, Akatar, the Dust Jackets. I didn't buy them, actually. My husband bought them for me for, I think, my birthday or something like that. And I love them so much. I think they are so beautiful. I put them all on. This one's my favorite one because I love Resan and Feyre. I also like the um, A Court of Silver Flame, not A Court of Silver Flames, um, A Court of Frost and Starlight. I also really loved that cover. Um, but these dust jackets, I just hit myself in the face. <laughs> These dust jackets gave me life. I love looking at them on my shelf. I wish I had more space to actually display all of them, um, but I guess I'm just going to have to wait until I have the space to buy another bookshelf. Love them. But the prettiest or most beautiful book that I personally bought myself so far is The Lost Apothecary. Sorry, I keep burping. It's The Fizz. Okay, so this book, I have no idea what it's about. I don't know anything about it. This is one book that I literally bought for the cover. Yes, I did it. I had a coupon and I used it on this and I have no regrets. I will read it because it's beautiful. So this book that I got, I went to Barnes and Noble, I saw it and I just was like, I really want it and I just had to have it. And that's The Last Garden in England. I didn't even know what this was about. Um, when I picked it up and read the back, it seemed pretty interesting but just based on the cover alone, I really like it. I love this whole garden-y aspect. I think it's because of the fact that this is absolute goals for me and this is what I would strive to have in a garden. But yeah, I think it's about a love story set in like World War II based off of just how she's dressed era. I don't remember, I don't know. I'll read it at some point because I think it's an absolute gorgeous cover, but I'm gonna be honest, I bought it solely based because I thought it was pretty. Okay, we are winding down finally. So number 13 is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? I would really, really, really like to read The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Um, this is a top one for me that I have really been wanting to get to. And it's huge, aka my skepticism with getting to it. But by the end of the year, I expect to have read this goddamn book. Yeah, this is going to be the top one for me. I'm going to leave this here. You can see my hesitation, obviously. But I love long books, okay? I just have to get past the initial freak out of it. And finally, number 14 is who is your favorite book community member? Um, so obviously, I'm going to give a few from all different platforms, but we're going to start with our main bitches, uh, Booked and Boozy. Brooke and Jada from over there. I love them, obviously, so much. Um, we'll link their podcast down below. They have a podcast, they have a TikTok, um, they've got an Instagram, they've got everything except for really YouTube. <laughs> but um, love them. I'm going to link their podcast down below. The second is a TikToker, uh, Cave and Books. She's the one who does the Akatar sketches. I love her a lot. I watch her TikToks literally all day, every day, and every single time I see her, I laugh. So, love her a lot. And then, finally, a YouTuber that I love is Krista from Books with Krista. Um, she is probably one of, like, our biggest homies on BookTube. Like, she is always messaging us, supporting us. I love to watch her videos. She watches ours. Um, so, Krista, if you're watching this, love you. Um, yeah, we have come into contact with some really awesome creators through this experience and made some cool friends. So, I'm really excited to hopefully make some more. So on top of all of the other people that Taylor had mentioned, I'm going to go ahead and say Nat from Nerdy Nat Reads. We absolutely love her. I do have a very specific memory of Taylor and I 
finishing filming one video and we're, we were a little tipsy and we put on Nerdy Nat Reads and we were just like, she's so cute, she's so funny, oh my gosh. So yes, she's on YouTube, go check her out, super adorable. I guess that's it for us. Um, thank you guys so much for sticking around for the beginning of 2021. It has been a whirlwind of a year already and we're very excited to see what the rest of the last six, five months, whatever, are gonna hold. And please, please let us know what your least and what your favorite and least favorite book is down in the comments. But also Taylor and I are open for suggestions. So if there's a book coming out that you guys think that we should be reading, please let us know because we're always on the lookout. And like I said, I find my books through Goodreads from people just liking them or wanting to read them. So I will literally pick up a book if one of my friends are reading it. So let us know. And if you haven't already, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And we also have Instagram and TikTok. Instagram is at tipsy underscore book underscore T-A-L-K-S. And TikTok is at tipsy underscore book underscore T-O-K-S. That gets harder every time. Brianna is normally the one who does it. She's great at it. But here, I did it. First try. But yeah, let's knock out the rest of our goals. Cheers. Thanks again, everyone. And cheers. Rayanne says uh, in our outline to chug this, but if I chug this, I will vomit. So, like if you want to see that. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm not going to chug it.